Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're taking a look at the MFJ870 SWR watt meter, also known as the Grandmaster. These meters usually retail for about $80, at least as of March of 2018, but I picked this one up at a local ham fest for $40, so about half price. Now the owner, uh, the seller told me that the meter was only four months old and hardly ever used, and uh, when we take a look at it, you'll see that that does appear to be the case. So here's a look at some of the features that this meter offers. You can pause the video here and read through all this if you want to. So let's open up the box and take a look and see what's inside. So first up here we have an instruction sheet. Now I don't think this is the original instruction sheet that came with it. I think the previous owner printed this off of his computer, at least I think that's what he told me anyway, but it should be a pretty close replica of what would have been supplied by the factory. So the only other thing in the box is the meter itself, kind of protected by this, I'll call it a sub box, kind of in clever packaging. We just pop these corners out and then we can slide the meter out and there it is. So here's a close up look at the meter. The meter itself is about three and a quarter inches wide by an inch and three quarters high. And then you can see the top range is the SWR range. The second range down is the 200 watt range. And then we have a 20 watt range and a five watt range. Over here, we have the function switch so we can change between forward, reverse, SWR set, or SWR functions. This dial right here changes the power level between 5, 20, and 200 watts. Down here, we can change the meter between peak envelope power and averaging by toggling the switch in or out. And then this large dial over here is for setting the SWR calibration point. Taking a look at the back of the meter, you can see that over here on the lower left, we have a port for 12 volt DC to run the backlight, and this is center pin positive. Here we have the SO239 connections. This is the one that connects to the transmitter, and this is the one that connects to the antenna. And that's pretty much it for the back of the meter. The construction of the meter is pretty much what you'd expect. The main chassis and case is all metal, and the front fascia is plastic. And you can see over here, this was the asking price from the owner at the Hamfest, but he accepted an offer of 40, so that's what I paid. As you can see, I've got the meter hooked up over here on my radio bench, and in particular, I've got it connected to my ICOM IC746 Pro. So now I'll zoom in on the meter and go through some of the operation. For this first test, I've got the ICOM set to ready mode so that it will generate a continuous 100 watt carrier. Over here on the meter, you can see that I'm in the forward mode. I've got the scale set to 200 watts, and I've got the switch set to averaging mode. And I've also got the meter connected to a dummy load at the moment. So let's key up the radio and see what it looks like. So you should have seen there that we had a 100 watt measurement, which should be pretty close to accurate. Close enough for amateur work anyway. For this next test, I've left the meter on the forward mode and the 200 watt scale, but I've switched it over to PEP mode. And I've also switched the radio over to lower sideband. So let's see what that looks like on the meter. Testing, one, two, three, four, five, 741. For the next test, I've gone back to ready mode, but you may be able to see that I've set the meter to reflected power. Now, I don't expect we're going to get too much reflected power since we're on a dummy load, but let's try it anyway. So I'll go ahead and key up the radio, and you may be able to see the meter move just slightly. I looked in my junk box and found a 12 volt power supply, the wall wart style, and plugged it into the back of the meter so I could get the backlight going. You can see here that it is an LED style light and it's pretty bright. So next up I'll do an SWR measurement. I've got my radio tuned to a frequency within the 80 meter ham band and I've got the radio also set to about 10 watts forward power. So now what I'll do is switch over to the SWR set function and I'll key the radio again, and we'll use this knob to set the needle to the cal point. Now that I've got the meter calibrated for SWR measurement, I'll click over to the SWR function, 
key the radio again and we should be able to see what the SWR reading is. So as you can see we now have an SWR measurement and I'm going to look at the lower scale on the SWR line since we're on low power. So you can see from where the needle is we're measuring about a 0.6 to 1 or so SWR at this particular frequency. Now if I were running higher power I'd want to use the upper scale and you can see that the upper scale and the lower scale are a little bit offset from each other and there's little black lines here to kind of draw the correlation between the, the upper and lower lines. You can see that the further right you go the more of a difference there is. So I'm going to do one more SWR measurement up on the 20 meter ham band which is a frequency that I know my antenna is not cut for. So once again I've set the output power to 10 watts to, for this test. So now I'll switch over to the SWR set function, key the radio, we'll recalibrate the needle here. Now I'll unkey the radio, switch back to the SWR function, we'll key the radio and measure the SWR. So as you can see, again reading the lower scale, we are up over 10 to 1. That's pretty much going to do it for the MFJ872 Grandmaster SWR wattmeter. If you want to learn more about this wattmeter, I'll leave some links down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please check out my Amazon store, which you'll find the link to in the description below. Thanks for watching.